Well, it seems like we hear about million dollar charity donations all the time, right? But when you think about it, that may have you thinking as well, does my $20 gift really make a difference? Lisa Dietlin, a philanthropic advisor, says yes, it does. She's here with ways for you to make your donation matter. Thanks so much for coming in. Happy to be here. Now, first off, what I found extremely interesting was that you would think that more of these huge donations would come from corporations. It's individuals. Absolutely. Most people don't realize that of the $295 billion, that's with a B, mm. billion dollars given away last year, 85% came from individuals, people just like you and me. Occasionally that millionaire makes the donation and we hear about it. Of course, we heard about Mr. Buffett's gift last year to the Gates Foundation. That was huge. But it's, it was huge, absolutely. <laughs> but it's people like you and me. Corporations only account for 4% of all the charitable donations in this country. Mm. So when you talk about the fact that obviously our donations matter, $25 for me, that really matters. What should people consider when they're making a donation? Great question. What they should consider is what are they passionate about? What do they care about? I counsel my clients and I say, if every time you're watching the television or opening a magazine, you see an ad about a children's organization and that really makes you and moves you to make a gift or makes you tear up or well up versus, you know, cleaning up the river. That's what you're probably really passionate about. The second thing is decide how much you're going to give away. I mean, most of us feel like we're slammed all the time by these asks. And then select the organizations. Do you want to work in your neighborhood, your community, your city, nationally? Then evaluate annually. I worked with a man who was involved every year with 25 charities, and every year he evaluated them. Mm. And it was my job when I led an organization to make sure we were on top of the list. And then finally, ask those tough questions and say, did my dollars go where I wanted them to go? Did it feed that family? Did it help with the animals that you know might not be wanted in our community? Mm -hmm. Did it help the pollution reduction in our you know, when you're just mentioning evaluating a charity, how do you pick the best one? What's the best way to go about that? You know, when you do have the passion in your heart for a certain organization, how do you kind of research and see what's best? Well, I always I say to my clients, go in and talk to the organization. But most of us don't have that time. They look at me and they're like, oh, Lisa, I wish I could. But the second thing is we have the Internet. Let your fingers do the walking, as we used to say. Um, go to guidestart.org, that's G-U-I-D-E star.org, and that's an organization that works to collect the information from nonprofit organizations and charities. They'll tell you the mission, what percentage of the money actually is going to programs versus administration costs. They'll give you a wealth of information. The other is the Better Business Bureau. They do give their stamp of approval also to nonprofit organizations. How do you say no to a charity? We're just, oh. We have just a few seconds left. It's kind of hard. It is hard, but don't let guilt drive your... Um, philanthropic decisions. Set aside a budget, know what you want to give away, and maybe put a little extra there for those unexpected requests. Well, Lisa, thanks so much. Great advice as always. Thank you. And to check out Lisa's top five tips for making a difference as an individual donor, go to our website. CBS2 is always on CBS2Chicago.com. Just click on Morning News. Kristen?